Wednesday, June the 24th, 2015. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we'll be A little more energy, please. Hello, people. <laughs> Today we'll be talking about Apple Music. Love music. <laughs> And our mm. usual chat, or Sean will be chatting with Jim Dalrymple from the loopinsight.com about Apple Music and other things and him losing weight and looking awesome. Um, and in the starting point photography portion, we'll be talking about basic editing on the iPhone. And so, <laughs> here is the man, the myth, the legend, the host, Sean King. <laughs> And you, that was better. Thank you. A little over the top. Mm, OTT somewhat. I have, I have created a, a Siri uh, alert announcement for this, for this very moment. Ready? Here we go, folks. Let me get her on camera to make sure we, we, we get we capture this moment. Um, Kim? Yes, sir. There, what is the, the slow creature with the shell that walks on all fours and then it retracts its head? Toys. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, a what? A tortoise. A tortoise. 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 It's a tortoise. It's a tortoise. No, it's not a tortoise. <laughs> Where's we've my... Been we've been having this discussion for a while now what? about that, the way the British say words. The way we now, I've never heard anyone say tortoise. Even Brits call it a tortoise. No, it's a tortoise. No, it's not, not a tortoise. Stop saying that. It's just goofy, tortoise. Eric Stein says, press record. I did. It's all recording. Uh, real quick shout out. I, I, I uh, ordered something online from a company called, uh, it looks like Kiwavi. It's awful, awful name. Hang on. Where's their uh, Kiwa, Kiwave? It's terrible. K-I-W-A-V. <coughs> so I ordered this thing online, and it's it's for our motorcycles. Actually, it's, it's uh, I mean, she gave it away. So. I get this thing, and it comes, look at this. It comes hand-wrapped li with a little bow on it. Pretty. It's pretty. so pretty. And pretty. you undo the little bow, and you take and you take the you take the wrapping off. Oh. Undo the little bow, and there's a handwritten note inside from Marie C. Sales at Keywave Kawav. Thanks for buying my idol. It's a handwritten note. That is so cool. Even if it's a photocopy handwritten note or you're using a font, the idea is really, really neat. I, I love I love doing business with, with these smaller companies. <laughs> who are, are you okay? <laughs> There's an easier way to do that. We don't have any in here. No, no, no. Peel up the, p the cardboard. The Peel the cardboard from the top first. Oh, oh geez, when do God. I do anything simple? No kidding. What it is is a uh, foot. Show the audience. It's a foot. For our motorcycles, when you put your motorcycle kickstand down, you put it on this thing, either on the top of it or on the bottom, or however you so choose, and it prevents your motorcycle in soft conditions from sinking into asphalt or mud or gravel or stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, continuing. Oh, uh, by the way, the, the again, the website is. Uh, oh, now it seems they got two different URLs, and I hate that. Uh, Kiwavmotors.com. K-I-W-A-V motors.com. Yeah. Um, 10% off code for welcome, hashtag back. No, don't use that. The one-time use only for me. Oh, shit. I'll edit that. I'll fix that in post. Uh, but it's kind of a nice, is it the same code there? It's cool. They do a selection of mirrors, accessories, hand tools, grips, auxiliary lights, con rods. Ooh, why don't I know what a con rod is? Do you, do you have the Car. same code in the back? Yeah. In the front? Yeah. Welcome back? Yeah. Well, that's silly. How can it be one time? Okay. Well, so, yes, so you can use the code. Um, What's a con rod? I have no idea. <laughs> You're asking me? Uh, I'm a mechanic. I'm the mechanic. Exactly. You're the I know mechanic. What I'm mechanic. I'm, I'm apparently, I'm the cook. He's the mechanic. Con rod. Um, hmm. So, continuing our series of adventures, this past Friday, Kim and I, uh, what are they, if, if you're not signed up for it, sign up for Groupon, because it's a shitty deal for the Groupon people, for the actual businesses, but it can be an awfully good deal for you, if only because, depending on where you live, of course, it gets you out adventuring and doing things that you wouldn't normally do. The UBC Botanical Garden walkway that we went on a couple weekends ago, which was fun, scary, but fun. 
I didn't even know about it. I had no idea that mm-hmm. it was ex- ex- in existence um, until we got the Groupon for it. And so this past weekend, there was a Groupon popped up to go to, I think it's called BVC Indoor Range. We went target shooting. We, pew, we, pew, we, pew, uh, pew, America. <laughs> we fired, like, real live, actual actual bullets. Not only little tiny 9mm bullets, but these were real bullets. And for, like, the, there's there's Kim's target. Yep. Kim shot the hell out of the guts of the... And you did very, very well yep. for an absolute beginner. Nasty killer. No. <laughs> We were using uh, nine millimeter Glocks uh, for Kim used it for fifty rounds, <coughs> and I did fifty ra- twenty five rounds of nine millimeter Glock and twenty five rounds of AR fifteen semi automatic rifle, which is really cool. It was, f- and you can see on um, my target behind me. It was very I was I was pretty damn accurate. It was tough to see, but I was aiming for the shoulder, and I got him up. You're taking me off camera. <laughs> Show you. But I was aiming for the spots you can see the holes of. I was doing that intentionally. I was aiming for that spot. And it was scary accurate. Now, they were, we were only 20 yards away. So you, you kind of better be accurate 20 yards away with, with a handgun and a rifle with a sight on it. So, But it was still fun. It was, mm-hmm. it was, it was, a, lo- it was a lot of fun. I, I, I enjoyed it. But it was scary, wasn't it? Yeah. The idea of where you were and what you were doing. Well, there were real guns with real bullets. Yeah, yeah exactly. These, 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 these weren't dummy guns. And there was a guy next to us, like two cubicles down, was shooting a fifty caliber handgun. Oh, I swear huge. to God, thing was this long. And then you and you had these bullets that were just oh, mind boggling. Mm. I have no interest in shooting something that big. I would definitely go back and shoot maybe another rifle. I like rifle shooting uh, more so than handgun shooting. Uh, I would definitely go back, but I have no interest in shooting something that freaking big. Mm. That's terrifying. And I have no interest in shotguns. You you fired shotguns before, mm-hmm. but I've got no interest in shotguns. But handguns are, are, are kind of fun. Um, Dave D., how do you get that monster on target? All you got to do is be kind of close. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Mac was our guy there. Very informative young man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, me, I'm just I'm, I'm a natural interviewer. I'm naturally curious. And he had some great answers to, uh, to the question there. So um, I was... I think it's called BBC Indoor Range if you're in the Vancouver area. And our friend Monty and his lovely wife Becky will be there. So, Monty, maybe you and Becky should go uh, go shoot some targets. It's fun. Fun, fun, fun. But this weekend, again, continuing Kim and Sean. Monty? Ex- ex- did I say Monty? You said Monty. That's what I meant Vito. I was like, Monty doesn't have a wife. Vito. He oh. might. Well, not since last week. Oh, oh. Um, Vito. Vito He's Mori. My babe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, something something I I don't know about uh, uh, Vito Mori and his wife Becky. So this coming weekend we are going to Port, no, Prince, no. What's that? What town's the name of the town? Campbell, Campbell River. Campbell River, British Columbia, which is what they call Up Island. If you look at a map of British Columbia, the Vancouver area, off the coast of Vancouver is an island called Vancouver Island. That's the capital city of Victoria. So we're going north of there, the tip of the island, to a t- little town, little tiny town called Campbell River. We're going to the Campbell River Marine Wildlife Safari, put on by, what's the name of the company? Discovery Marine Safaris, adventurewhalewatching.com. We're going whale watching. How much fun is this going to be? Mm-hmm. This is just going to be stupid. Now, you've never seen a whale before, have you? What's, no. the, what's the biggest marine creature you've seen? The biggest marine creature. The Dolphin. Bi- the biggest. And, and porpoise. Pu- oh, don't start. Not a porpoise. It knows a porpoise. I'm not on purpose. It's a porpoise. It's not a porpoise. Like tortoise. <laughs> so porpoise. And a dolphin. Yes. Oh, my God. W- and and where, did, where did you see oh, this? Oh, and uh, you know those, is it sea lions? Yes. Yeah, they're big. I've seen them. So so uh, so wh- where where was this? What did you see? Sea lions in uh, Oregon, okay, and dolphins and porpoises in. Stop saying porpoises. New Zealand, and I've seen them on the ferry here, going across. But the it's Rihanna. been a while. Yeah. It's been a while yeah. for you. It's been, it's been a long time. Um, <laughs> I remember the first and only time I've seen uh, orca, which is the proper name we fo- we folks will call killer whale. Orca whales is uh, when I first moved to Vancouver, twenty twenty five years ago. Going across on the ferry from Vancouver to Victoria, 
uh, you, you wind your way through a bunch of little islands. And in one of the uh, coves there, there were the, the captain of the, of the ferry actually stopped the ferry because I guess the, the, the orcas were crossing in front of the ferry and they didn't want to hit anyone. And um, so we all rushed to the bow of the boat to watch these beautiful animals swim by. Was there anything I've ever seen? I've seen all kinds of dolphins. And, uh, yeah, I've been scuba diving with dolphins and that kind of stuff. So apparently these folks at uh, Adventure Whale Watching have um, – Areas where, and I didn't realize this. I, I actually called the guy up to find out more information about it because I was I was curious as to what um, how they can guarantee that you'll be able to see whales. And when I asked him about it, he said, "Well, it's because we know where they're going to be." I said, "I said, what do you mean?" He said, "Well, we we know that um, the whales are going to be in in certain areas at certain times." Because many of the the animals are, I can't, I'm trying to get the screen on, and it will not frickin' work for me, so hell with it. Just go to the website, VentureWhaleWatching.com. They get a really annoying uh, auto-playing video. To watch the video or turn it off or, or whatever you can't do. Um, it turns out many of the uh, animals are uh, not only seasonal, but they're also very uh, territorial. We'll always go to the same place at the same time of year. And so they know the generality of wh where the whales are going to be. So we're almost guaranteed of seeing that. So because of that, because we're going to be on a boat, because we're going to be uh, – you're not allowed to get too close to the, the whales. They can come to you, but you can't really chase them the whales. It's too stressful for them. I went and l rented this bad boy. You can actually do bench curls with this thing. Th this, is, this is a big, heavy – this is all metal. This thing is solid, all-metal lens. Uh, rented it from LensRentalCanada.com if you're interested in renting a lens. I tried to rent it from our friends at Henry's, but Henry's didn't have this lens uh, for, for rent. Um, it's a 200-millimeter lens, but I've got on this end of it a teleconverter. It's basically a magnifying glass on the end of it. So now it's a 400-millimeter lens. Um, this is going to be a lot of fun to shoot with. I'm really looking forward to going and I'm going to spend tomorrow practicing shooting this thing because there's a certain way to hold it. There's a certain way to shoot with it. Uh, there's a minimal shooting distance. There's a way to focus and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is just going to be so much fun to shoot on. Um, looking forward to it. So hopefully I'll get some good shots and be able to show you guys that stuff on next week's show. What were you laughing about? Nothing. You, you were lying. You were <laughs> laughing. I heard you. <laughs> what, what were you laughing about? No, I'm just laughing about people find it funny that I say tortoise and porpoise. Because you're saying And wrong. banana. And banana today. I oh had bananas. somebody criticize me the way I say banana. I like banana. I think banana's kind of cute. Mm -hmm. Tortoise, porpoise. It's a big freaking dog. Mm -hmm. um, so later on the show, we're going to talk about uh, basic iPhone photo editing. Uh, this is a, s a uh, segment dedicated to my new little sister. Yes, at my age, I discovered I've got another brother and two other sisters. Oh, yeah, that's not a little weird. You want to read that story? Go to D-O-A-M-M dot com. It just gets typical Sean weird life stuff. So uh, go, go, go read that. But my, uh, this is life here. My sister, uh, Kathy, who lives in Kingston, Ontario. Uh, hi, Kathy. Um, this is a segment dedicated for her. Because she's, she's a smart woman, but she's not a, a technophile. She doesn't know anything about her iPhone. So I've been teaching her via iMessage about how to use her iPhone, and I got the idea to, to talk about basic iPhone photo editing. Every photo you, you, you take should be edited in some way, shape, or form, and it's easier to do on the iPhone. So we'll talk about that, and then up next, we're going to talk to our good friend Jim Dalble from The Loop at loopinsight.com about Apple Music and what his expectations are for it coming up next week. This is your Mac for Life. <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. This is Your Mac Life. I am Sean King. Sorry, we uh, Jim Downpour isn't answering his phone, so screw up! F him! He's gone for a walk. He's what? He's probably gone for a He's walk. He's gone for a walk? <laughs> he, may, may, may have gone for a walk. No, you can't go for a walk. We've been doing this for like 10 years at 5.45 p.m. Pacific time for 10 freaking years. Turn your phone on! Screw him. So over the past weekend, all hell broke loose. Apple Music Wise, when some young blonde lady complained about something. Oh my God, this was just nuts. The whole procedure was nuts. What a lot of people don't realize is independent artists have been complaining about this since Apple Music got started. The, the issue is Apple has said they're going to give all of us, each and every one of us, a free three-month trial of Apple Music. And the way streaming works, you may not know this, is that when you play a song, streaming, and I, I'm sure it's as soon as you click play, whether you listen to the whole thing or not, the artist gets a penny or even less. Mm -hmm. That's the way Spotify works. That's the way radio works. That's the way all these other services work. And so what Apple was saying is we are not going to collect that money from you, the user, but we're also not going to pay that money to the artist. And granted, some artists can afford that because – Spotify, from the numbers that we've seen fr um, from artists, doesn't pay a lot of money. Neither will Apple. There's something along the lines of a, I want to say Pitbull, but it wasn't, but some, some famous pop artist. Their song had been played something in the neighborhood of 10 million times on Spotify. You said it was Usher. Was it Usher? Okay, Usher. Yeah. 10 million times on Spotify, and he got $6,000, which is nothing. You know, Usher wouldn't do your voicemail for $6,000. So artists are not going to get rich off streaming fees. So uh, what Apple is saying, eh, you know what, we're not going to be taking that much money off streaming, so we're going to do it for free and not pay out the artist. And what will happen is we'll discover music, and then they'll come back to it three months later, and Apple will give them a cut. Well, independent artists have been complaining about this for at least the last two weeks. They were pretty much ignored by everybody until Taylor Swift got her knickers in a knot and posted her little screed on her website over at Tumblr.com. And the internet lost its collective mind. Mm. Now, there was, I some, there was some bad blood. <laughs> Nice lyrics on her latest song. Thank you, because I've never heard a Taylor Swift song, so I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Um, no. Uh, is it Shake It Off? Shake It Down? Shake It Up? <laughs> yeah. What the hell's the name of the song? <laughs> Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Speak into the microphone. I can't remember it. Shake it. Yeah, shake it something. The only time I've ever listened to Taylor Swift song was that uh, Delaware or Maryland cop. Shake it out. Shake it out. I think, yeah. He, he was the cop who, 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 yeah, who... shake it off, Jerry. Yeah. Whatever. He was the cop who was singing along with a song to his, to his dashboard camera. That's the only time I've ever listened to a Taylor Swift song. <laughs> That's the longest I've ever listened to Taylor Swift. Normally, it comes on... The radio or whatever. Oh, God, no, I'm not listening to that whiny little, eh, my life sucks. Uh, shut up, you're 24. Hey, you broke up another guy. Yeah, shut up, okay? It's not my kind of music. So why do you think that the interwebs reacted this way to Taylor Swift and not to the other independent artists? Because people latch on to people that they know are popular with a large number of people. They think, oh, if I jump on the bandwagon, good or bad, I'll get as much attention as she does. Okay, hang For on. Ten uh, seconds. Hang on. What's up? Talk into that bit. I I am talking into that bit. I just don't want it stuck up my nose it like has you to be do. Stuck up your nose for the audience to hear you. Sly says, why would Apple even think of not paying the artist during the trial period? Unless this is exactly what they wanted, and they got more publicity out of it as a result. Well, the reason why, uh, uh, Sly, is Apple has told the um, the record labels. Remember, the record labels make this deal. The individual artists don't make this deal. These deals are made for them on behalf of the record label. Now, in this case, Taylor Swift is her own record label, but for the most part, that's not the way it's going to work. So the labels did this deal, and the deal was... Apple is going to pay out more than other streaming radio services. Now, it's not a lot more. It's like 2% more. But so Apple's logic is we're going to hold back revenue for three months. But 
in the next 10 months, no, sorry, nine months, you'll make more money in theory. That's Apple. That was Apple's logic behind it. And I've heard that not everyone at Apple was in agreement on this, which is one of the reasons why it was so easy for them to change their mind, that Taylor Swift's letter to Apple came out Sunday morning, I think. And then by Sunday evening, Eddie Q was tweeting that they had changed their mind. They, in fact, would be paying the independent artists and others for the music that, that we listen to. In my opinion, it was all a tempest in a teapot. In my opinion, d- d- Apple was going to make this good anyway. It was just a matter of time. Taylor Swift, I think, just pushed Apple in the direction they probably wanted to go anyway. It makes good economic sense for Apple to withhold that money because it means that money stays in their bank account. Apple's not going to be making money off of Apple Music for the first three months. So Apple's saying rather than us losing money, we're going to not pay out anybody. But then it came, the push came to shove, and they said, okay, you know what? We're not paying out that much money anyway. Again, artists are not going to get filthy, stinking rich off of Apple Music. Which is why the news today was even more interesting to me that the umbrella organization for a lot of independent labels and artists have agreed to sign on to Apple Music, which probably doubled the potential library for Apple Music just in one fell swoop. And what that means is, from my point of view anyway, is I'll have access to more artists that aren't top 40. I don't listen to Usher. I don't listen to Pitbull. I don't listen to Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, uh, the the Timberlake kid. What's his name? Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. Is it Justin Bieber? And Justin Timberlake? Yep. Well, unfortunate. So I don't listen to Top 40 unless I'm hearing it from Kim in the, in the car. She's singing along to it. That's literally the only time. I, I, mean, I, I got Spotify. I got a three-month trial for Spotify. I've been listening to the charts. I'm like, wow, this is just... Yeah. I immediately run over to Rage Against the Machine or The Police or The Clash or somebody. So that's not my kind of music anyway. So I'm not the target audi- audience for that stuff. So that's why I was never really hugely excited over Apple Music from the point of view of the same service it does for Spotify. I like the idea of the DJs. I like the idea of this behind-the-scenes stuff for artists that I am interested in. So that's why, to me, the, the, the independent artist thing is a big deal because it will access, it'll give you access to a lot more music than you were going to get before this. Now, you are a Top 40 fan, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yep. And you and you have used and do like using Spotify, don't you? Yep. Have you read up or learned anything about Apple Music in in the couple of weeks since it's been announced? Or you just are you no? Just I'll just wait. I'll just you wait and then like use it. it. Yeah, like I like old music, so yeah, I will give it a whirl. Do you think that you will use it? No, let me take that, take it back. You you'll have access to not just at the Apple Music part of it, but the DJ part of it, and the Musician Connect part of it. Does either of those last two things interest you? The fact that you have a DJ or the fact that you'll have this behind-the-scenes stuff of artists? Uh, mm, not really. That doesn't attract me, but, I mean, it might be interesting to see something different because I do like to hear different artists, mm-hmm. something a bit original, unique. Do you yeah. like the idea of, as they showed in the in the keynote, um, artists will show you their lyrics or show you behind-the-scenes videos or that kind of stuff? Do you care about that kind of stuff? Mm, sometimes it's interesting. But, I mean, lyrics are good because then I actually can sing along properly without going la, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, I've done that a lot with Spotify. There, there's a, there's a, seg- there's a, a button on Spotify that uh, lets you show th- shows you the lyrics. And it was so funny. I was talking to, to uh, on Twitter, uh, our, our friend uh, uh, Thomas in uh, Denmark, Dar X Mac. He's actually German, mm-hmm. and and he's a big fan of like really hard, nasty metal music, like death metal and all that kind of stuff. He loves it. And I like some of it, but I'm not a, nearly as big a fan as, as he is. But there's one band or one song I really like from a band called Ramstein. The song's called Du Hast. Du Hast, yeah. Du Hast Mich. 
do hospice to frog, do hospice to frog. It's just really angry music yeah. in German. <laughs> yes, it is. And so the, the best thing ever was me getting Spotify, immediately doing a search for Ramstein do host, clicking the lyrics button and sitting right here and sing along. <laughs> the top of my lungs in German. <laughs> No translation. I'm singing in German. Do hospice, do frog, and make the mick fuck fly. Yes, okay. Spitting all over myself. It was great. I loved it. But the other funny thing about seeing the lyrics on the screen is, is there's a song. It's funny how how often you screw up the lyrics of songs. <laughs> you know? How you thought the lyrics went this way, and you read it, and you go, oh, that's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the classic one was the, uh, the misheard Jimi Hendrix line. Of excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> everyone oh. thought for a long time everyone thought Jimmy Hendrix was gay. Because the lyrics of the song, excuse me while I kiss is actually why I kiss the sky. <laughs> so I like the lyrics though. Um I, I the other thing I like about Spotify too is the ability to when I do hear a song I like, click on the little checkbox. To favorite it, like to favor it and mm-hmm. it saves it into my library. Not as a download, but as as, as a streaming file. And what that means is that when I'm in the mood, when I'm, when I'm tired of listening to unknown stuff, mm-hmm. I can click on that and I get a whole long list mm-hmm. of stuff I know I'm going to like. That's what I generally tend to do. In the mornings, I'll listen to charts and browse and, and, and listen to stuff I've never listened to before. Aren't we going to be able to do that with Apple? Yes. You'll be yeah. able to do the exact same so thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're pretty much going to be the same service except mm-hmm. for the DJ aspect, of which I'm really mm-hmm. interested to see how they pull that off. Mm-hmm. And... The music connect aspect, which I'm going to be less interested in because I generally don't care about the people behind the music. I don't care about behind the scenes stuff. I don't care about you showing me your tour bus. I don't, I don't, I don't care about that stuff. Hmm. I don't care about but your house. You know, whatever, whatever they're going to show, I know for me personally, I'm generally not going to care about that stuff. Interviews I like, but having the artist show me behind the scenes stuff of whatever, eh, not, not so much. That doesn't interest me. But this is going to be g- going to be very interesting. Arcsign says Taylor Swift is a successful artist. Having a successful artist stand up for smaller independent artists is a good thing. She was willing to hold back her album, but not just for better personal deal, but a better deal for all. Well, she held back the, the album from Spotify, and it's an old album. It's from last fall, so I don't know if it's that big a deal. I think most of her fans already have that album, so I don't know if, if that's part of it. Um, I think it was something that Apple was going to do anyway once enough of a groundswell happened, once enough independent artists got together or enough people said, hey, w- this isn't right. I think the Taylor Swift thing pushed them over the top. I don't think Taylor Swift has that much power. The worst thing in the world is seeing everyone <sighs> on Twitter, Taylor Swift, could you solve this problem now? It's like, it's not how it works, you idiots. D- d- stop doing that. Um. Sly says, I've had Springsteen's ass in my hand on more than one occasion. Music Connect ain't going to connect me any more than that. There's actual video out there, folks, on the web of our lovely Sly grabbing Bruce Springsteen's ass. <laughs> just And not just a little pokey pokey. She went, and just got a handful of cheek. <laughs> Uh, Kim Sly is a insanely huge I Springsteen know, fan. I know, you told okay. me. Right. Um, Mosquito, Apple wants to be everyone's music store. I said that in a loop comment. It was said that someone had to say it back. Um, Mosquito, I like what Taylor Swift did, even though I don't care for her kind of music. The Apple store isn't concerned with only one kind of music. That's going to be another issue, too, Is w- and that we don't know about. We've heard people who like classical music are concerned about the Apple Store, how much classical music will be there, how much jazz, how much old blues, old R&B, old soul, Mm -hmm. all that older stuff. We know they're going to have Top 40 covered Mm -hmm. and Top 40 and everything covered. They're going to have Top 40 and... And original and new artists. Yeah, exactly. They're going to have all that stuff covered. But what if you are the demographic who are older. So. Because like, the, like the older guy that music. was demoing it slightly, he kind of said, you know, he's into the salsa, South American kind of yeah. Latin yep. vibe. So, yeah, you're sure. Music's music. Same with me. I, and I love African beats, too. Mm-hmm. And Caribbean be- beats and that kind of stuff. So, fingers crossed. 
It opens up next, today's the 24th, next Tuesday. So by next week's show, we'll all have tried Apple Music. Is there anyone out there who's not going to at least try it? I don't mean, I didn't say pay for it. But is there anyone out there who just doesn't like the idea of Apple Music? I don't think so. No. I can't imagine why. Someone's going to give you a free trial of a cool service. Actually, I saw um, Sherry said something about streaming music. Sherry, what was it that you uh, said earlier in the chat? I don't understand people who have endless libraries of streaming music at their fingertips and still listen to the same crap that was played in the radio every five minutes. <laughs> That's a, I don't disagree with you there, Sherry. Um, everyone's going to try this thing. We're all going to download the update to iTunes next Tuesday. We're all going to start poking around with Apple Music. And a certain percentage of us are going to like it. Uh, Brian Moreau says, just be controversial. I listen to internet broadcast. Yeah, but Brian, okay, Brian says, no, I'm not interested. Interesting, Brian. I mean, it's not controversial. You just aren't interested, and that's fine. But I'd be willing to bet you are in the vast minority when it comes to that kind of stuff. Apple has approximately 500 plus million potential subscribers to Apple Music. I'd say at least three quarters of them are going to at least try it. Mm. They're going to at least try it. I know. Let me take that back. Half of them will download the update. Some folks just don't update things like Sly. Sly doesn't update for years. I know she'll update this one, but I'm, I'm teasing her. So some people won't update. So a small percentage of that. May, let's, let's say half. So now we're down to 250 million people who will try this. In three months' time, so it's at June, July, August, September. September 30th, Apple's going to ask us to pay $10 for Apple Music. That's when things are going to get interesting. So you've got 250 million people who are going to be asked to pay $10. I would say half of them are going to say no right away. Just they can't afford it. It's not worth it. They don't like it, whatever they might own the bandwidth, whatever it might be. Now we're down to 125 million. I think at least half of that 125 million will buy Apple Music. I think September, th October 1st, Apple will have 75 million customers, paying customers to Apple Music. Anyone disagree with me? Anyone think that number is too high, too low? Send me an email to sean at yourmaclifeshow.com or on air at yourmaclifeshow.com. Spotify claims they've got, and Spotify is the biggest service out there. Spotify claims they've got 300 million people signed up for the service. Sounds good. But they also claim they've, they've got 20 million paying subscribers. Not very many if you've got 300 million people listening to your service. So that's a ratio that's less than 10% of the people who listen to Spotify on a monthly basis actually pay for Spotify. Apple's going to get that by accident. There's going to be 20 million people who are going to click on that buy button by accident. There is no way I can possibly see Apple not getting at least 50 million people in the first weekend. By Christmas 2015, Apple could have 100 million subscribers to streaming music. So from Apple's point of view, that's one of the reasons why they did, they felt it was okay to not pay out to people. Mm -hmm. Because they, they figure, you know what, you you give us this stuff for free. We're not making any money on it. It's actually costing us money, got bandwidth and all that kind of stuff. It's costing us money. And so you take the hit with us. Because on January 1st, 2016, we're going to have 100 million subscribers listening to your music. And we're going to be promoting you. And we're going to be talking about you on the DJ, DJ sh station. And you're going to be able to reach out to fans and do videos, your own YouTube videos. You want to do, you want to take your iPhone and shoot the studio? Go ahead, go nuts, enjoy. I think it's one of the reasons why Apple said that, that they weren't going to pay for the streaming. They thought it would, it would go over okay. Now, maybe that's Apple's fault for not explaining it properly to the bands and the artists. But. It's going to be interesting. 
slices them better, doing updates these days, sort of. Uh, that's uh, guys in the IRC chat. We're talking about podcasts too. That's gonna be interesting. Will we get podcasts on Apple Music? Well, people say no. It's for music only. But there are musical podcasts. There are podcasts about music. People who do podcasts are artists, arguably, just as much as a Taylor Swift is or a Zane Lowe is. So why wouldn't podcasts be in the... It's not music. What about a podcast about music? And there are podcasts that include music. What if I'm an artist who does a podcast about music and I play my own music? On the podcast? On the podcast. That's different. Yeah, okay. Still music. Yeah. Still a podcast. Now, I'm not saying Your Mac Life isn't going to be on Apple Music. That's obvious that we're not. I mean, nothing to do with music. I got a tin ear and couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. Mm-hmm. Can you sing? No. I've oh, I can. Yeah, I've heard you sing. I've heard you sing. Yeah. Not bad. But I, I I'm don't not good, sing. though. I don't sing. No. Well, you, well, well, what you lack in ability, you make up for in enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nothing uh, great uh, uh, was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. Uh, who's talking? Someone's mic is up. Who was that? Maurice, shut up. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know it's because him? Because he's the, it's the only microphone that was still up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see to to, to see what happens with Apple Music in the first three months of a trial period, and then in the first few months up till Christmas. But I didn't think it's gonna. I think it's going to just destroy, not destroy in a, in a go-away sense, but certainly from a numbers point of view, just destroy Spotify. If you are a Mac user, there is, in my mind, I haven't seen any, any argument against this, there's no reason why you would use Spotify. Because every bit of music that's going to be on Spotify is going to be on Apple Music. Plus, you're going to get DJs. Plus, you're going to get the Apple... Music Connect. Plus, you're going to get ex- exclusives. I know when my Spotify deal, three month deal, runs out, I'm dropping Spotify. From what I know of Apple Music, now it might change. It might be something else about Apple Music that bugs me, the interface or whatever it might be. Airman George says I don't drive enough to buy Sirius, so I'll be trying Apple service. Looking forward to being a part of a community that community that hopefully beats one radio DJs will create. That's another thing that's really, really, really interesting to me, Airman Gerard. I'm just going to call you Gerard. That's all right. I know you, but goodbye. Is how is that going to work? For some reason in my head, I really love the idea of you're in Paris and I'm in Vancouver and that DJ plays that song. We'll both listen to the same song at the same time. I don't know why I find that so interesting and cool and fascinating. Mm -hmm. We can comment. In theory, they're going to have chat rooms, but the problem is there's going to be billions of people in the chat room. But we can comment on that live via Twitter. So if if Gerard's on Twitter in Paris and he hears this song, he can say on Twitter, boom. Or I, maybe he can do it in, in Beats Music and it sends me a text message or whatever it is. Hey, make sure you listen to this really cool song. I love the idea of that. I don't know why I find that so fascinating. I think because part of it for me is, and different for you, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, to me, music is more a social thing than it is a private thing. Mm. That I tend to generally tend to like music more when I'm with other people than I'm just sitting by myself listening to music. Is that, that's not true for you, is it? No, I like it on my own. You're the, the other way around. Both, but mostly on my own. Yeah. Yep. I think it depends on how you um, approach music to begin with. Although I was never with that person who sat with his friends in a dorm room listening to the latest CD or album. Were you? Mm-hmm. You did? Mm-hmm. Reading the liner notes and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, n- I never did that. I never, I never sat around with friends yep. listening to, to a new album. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Do you remember? Um, I think it was Blondie, Parallel Lines. <laughs> Rush, Bastille Day. Mm. What was the first concert you ever went to? Oh. <laughs> the Wombles. <laughs> live. <laughs> <laughs> I 
okay, Mike you Bat. Have, you can yeah. have explained to the audience who the Wombles are. The Wombles. It's a cartoon. Look it up on YouTube. You will be entertained. Not necessarily. <laughs> the Wombles of Wimbledon. Common are we. Making a use of the things that we see. Things that the everyday folks leave behind. Yeah. And, 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 and what were Wombles? Just these pretend like bear-like creatures that lived in the burrows of Wimbledon Common and they came out and they cleaned up all the litter. Yeah. But they also had lots of songs they sang. It was cool. Wombleboro Boogie. <laughs> <laughs> Look it up. Seriously. You'll laugh. Alrighty then. I'm laughing now. Yeah, you showed me some of the videos. It was a little psychedelic. It was a little weird. Mm -hmm. A little strange. Yep. Uh, Brian Monroe says, yeah, same thing to you, Earl, to the Wombles. Dude, she's sitting right here. I already know all about the Wombles, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, to show the difference in our personalities, your first concert was basically puppets. No, they were in costumes. They were men playing okay. live instruments, live band in Womble costumes. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> My first concert, Kiss. <laughs> mm. That may say far too much about our personalities right there. <laughs> Kiss. I love Kiss. Oh, my God. I was one of those those kids with the Kiss Army T-shirts and, you know, all that all that kind of stuff. I love Kiss. It was in the Halifax Forum, the old Halifax Forum. And we were 50 feet from the stage. This was the, the concert tour where they bragged about the fact they had 60-foot-high stacks of speakers. We were close enough that when Gene Simmons spit fire, we felt the heat. Oh, God, it was so much fun. Did you wear the makeup? No. I, d I didn't go that far because I couldn't afford the makeup. Oh. I never, I ne but plus, I was never a dress-up kind of guy anyway, so no, I, I never would have worn, worn the makeup. But I was deaf for three days, literally deaf for three days. Then I had tinnitus for like another two weeks afterwards. That one concert, I destroyed hearing for the rest of my life. Brutal sound. Just for nothing but bass. Just huge, huge noise. <laughs> Um. So yeah, what, what what are your thoughts on Apple Music? I gotta assume everyone except for Brian Monroe, and fair enough, Brian is gonna tr at least try it. Uh, do you have a service now? Do you use the service? Uh, what do you like about the service you use now? What do you like from here? What about what you hear when it comes to Apple Music? Send me emails to on air at yourmaclifeshow dot com. You want to talk about it on tonight's show or anytime during the week? I read all the emails I get during the week. So if you want to send it out during the week, you are more than welcome to do it. Then, Sherry, first concert, Kim Mitchell, good old Canadian Kim Mitchell, uh, Parliament Hill, Canada Day, Dave D's first concert was Jefferson Airplane, oh dude, <laughs> you're old, <laughs> Mac Man's first concert was uh, the Beach Boys, that'd be cool, they played at the stadium of a mile from my house and went down there and watched a chunk of it through the fence, they opened the gates about 40 minutes before it ended. <laughs> Mosquito, my first concert at a venue large in a bar with might have been Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden was impressive and annoying at the same time. Yeah, I've, I've stopped going to stadium shows because the sound's just awful. Unless you're sitting in the first five rows, it sounds terrible. Whether it be here, BC Place, even Rogers Arena. I'll only go to concerts now at places like the Commodore or Orpheum Theater type setups. I'm, I, I'm not going anymore to the big giant places. ArcSign says, I'm not going to sign up for, the Apple, for Apple Music, not even for the three free months. ArcSign, I'd love to hear your reasoning why. Send me an email if you have to, or post it in the IRC chat room. Folks, as always, IRC chat room, you can join us. Uh, it's irc.chat-solutions. Uh, we are in the pound, your Mac Life channel. But if that's too hard, Monty, our good friend Monty, right there in the IRC chat room, has set it up so you can go to the website, yourmaclifeshow.com. Right on the front page, you put in your name, and Monty's little code drops you in the IRC chat room all by yourself. Or all, sorry, not by yourself. Very easily and with us. So please join us in the IRC chat room. Mosquito, big arenas and stadiums are bullshit for sound. It's all about the spectacle and bragging rights. He's, he's not wrong. Sherry, an ex of mine dragged me to a Nickelback show in Ottawa. That's one of the reasons why he's an ex. <laughs> <laughs> so much hate for Nickelback. So uh, much hate for Nickelback. I don't think they're that bad. No, I, like I don't think them. they're great. I mean, there's certainly no no classic rock type stuff. They're not Bachman Turner Overdrive, mm. but they're perfectly 
adequate music. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, there's a guy. I know, he's, he's a couple songs they have that I like. Mosquito. I am being nice to BTO. BTO is a classic Canadian band. Are you kidding me? I would never hear a bad word about, about BTO. It just it ain't right. Who's BTO? Bachman Turner Overdrive. Oh, okay. I didn't realize they were taking care of business. Yeah, yeah. You know, a bunch of other great songs. So yeah, uh, send me emails to onair at yourmaclifeshow.com. Um, yeah, let's do our, our starting point photography segment. This this mm. this segment is dedicated to my new little sister. <laughs> it's so weird saying that. My new little sister, uh, Kathy. Kathy is in uh, Kingston, Ontario. That's a town about two hours that way from Toronto. What is that? That's north east. Mm-hmm. Yes, of of Toronto. Sorry, I'm directionally challenged. Um, and and Kathy found me about two three weeks ago on on Twitter. If you want to f- hear the full story or hear some of the story, go to uh, d o a m m dot com, diary of a madman dot com, and I r- wrote a Father's Day piece up there uh, this past weekend, so you can read about that bit of insanity of my life right there. So Kathy and I have been getting to know each other over iMessage and chatting about things and 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 I got her on I got her she was a text message person I got her on iMessage she has an iPhone didn't know how to set up iMessage so I told her helped her out in getting set up an iMessage and j- only today this afternoon <coughs> did she m- find out that she could send photos in text messages in iMessage and so it gave me the idea of well, you know I talk all the time to people about editing your photos and, and back up a little bit Every photo you take should be edited in some way, shape, or form. The camera you use, no matter what camera it is, whether it's your iPhone camera or whether you're using one of these bad boys, every photo you take needs some kind of editing. No photo is perfect straight out of the camera. The better you become as a photographer, the better the photos come out of the camera, but they still need something done to them. So, so many of us shoot with the iPhone. Even I love shooting with the iPhone. The iPhone's a a, a great camera for a phone. So, one of the things you have to learn is how to use the software. It's not just a matter of clicking the button and then posting it to Facebook or sending it off to iMessage or off to Twitter. Kim, could you do me a favor? If you plug that uh, lightning cable into the back of this computer. This what? That lightning cable. No, no, sorry. I'm sorry. The the the, I, the iPhone cable. This one? Yeah, I see that. See, perfect example. I called it a lightning cable. You don't even know what the hell that is. I called it the iPhone cable. She went, oh, this one. It's just it's the little things like that. Can I get space for you? Yeah, plug it, plug it in into my um. What the hell is it called? Keyboard. Okay. What I'm doing, Kim, is I'm when I plug my iPhone into my. Uh, computer, mm-hmm. I can actually then use software to show the audience. How is plugging your phone into your keyboard plugging it into the computer? Good question. My keyboard and your and your in the external keyboard, not in, but these at external keyboards are USB hubs. They have actual because so the keyboard is plugged into the Macintosh yeah. through USB, and there's two USB connections on either end of the keyboard. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's just basically going through the keyboard and, and then into oh. the computer. Okay. Learn something new every day. I try. I try to teach something new every day. So let me see if I can do this. Who's thick as a brick? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Who who called you thick as a brick? I I will kick their ass. (laughs) New movie recording. There we go. So let me get Kim. No offense, Kim. I'm 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 taking you off. um, Camera. Good. Connection failed to the computer I'm using and showing Kim on video. Mm. Oh my God! Can you tell it's Wednesday? Can you tell it's Wednesday? Mm-hmm. Can I ask a question? You absolutely can. Anytime you'd like. Um, why is it nobody answered me on Twitter? Bastards. Uh, when I said, "How come?" I don't know what they're called. You know those icons, emojis symbols that you use when you're texting or some people do Sean doesn't like them I hate uh, them but 
how come there are no motorbikes? <laughs> how come? That's an excellent question. How come there's none? I, I, I don't know. And there should be a sport bike, a cruising bike, a bagger, and a chopper, one at of least. Each. Yeah. There should be four. Four types of motorbike symbols on my text. I'd be, curious to, know, I'd be curious to know how Apple chose those uh, emojis to begin with. Mm -hmm. and Like a freaking tram? <laughs> not in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I do not know. I know. There's like a multitude of trams, coaches, buses, train, carriage, colors and things. And an ambulance and police car and something. But there's no motorcycles. None. There's even a pedal bike. It's a travesty. Or a push bike, as I call them. Okay, I have to, I have to force quit you, sorry, but in That's order to okay. get this done. You're still on audio, but uh, I have to force quit the video. Ah, so yes, this is very Japanese based. Yes, I can see that, Brian. Because that's where emoji basically came right. from. Right. Yeah, uh, okay, so here, here we got. Let me. They like bikes. Ninja. Hello. Oops, I can't get this. <laughs> Kawasaki Ninja. Can Marty see this? much of a pain in the ass it was. Sorry, let me change the background. Oh, God. Solid color. Go with black. Quit all of this. Can the size get bigger? Motorbikes are big in Japan, Brian. They're huge in Japan. Huge. They love Monsters. fucking motorbikes. Okay. So, here is the Any photo. Let me see. Should should look at all my photos. Make sure. No, go away. I know it's full. Piss off. No photos. Yeah, you should be really careful with yeah, this no kind of hello. There's nothing on my phone. I don't need. I don't want the audience to see. Some things the audience doesn't want to see, but <laughs> nothing I don't want them to see. Cinnamon. <laughs> so, again, this is for my little sister Kathy. But you guys obviously can use this too. So no matter which way you hold your phone, whether you hold it in the vertical axis or horizontally, you can see here at the bottom of the screen, or at the top of the screen in this case, that edit button up there. I don't know if I can show this in the on, on the video. Yes, I can. So up here it says edit. Don't ignore that button. That button can make your photos look great. You know, you still need to show, you still need to, have a properly composed photo. You still need to have a photo that's visually interesting. But what you want to do is make it even more interesting. Remember I said before, the, your, your camera is not as good as your eye and your brain. Your eye and your brain captures a lot more stuff than any camera is ever going to capture. So what you want to do is manipulate that image to be closer to what you want it to be. So here, here in, in this example, I've got this photo, and I don't know why the screen went blank. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, dear. Technology hates me, and it really shouldn't, because mm. I love technology. Let me try this again. There. So click on that Edit button, and up pops up. And I'm going to go with a vertical route with this now because there's a bigger picture. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see Cancel, a funny little square, um, monochrome circles, what looks like a clock timer, and three dots. Thank you, Apple, for making that completely unclear of what that stuff is. So what you have to do... Just press it. Ding, 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 ding! The pretty girl in the corner. That's all you do. So there's a cancel button. Don't press that one. There's a funny square button. Press that one. And look what happens. You have this odd little numbers in the bottom. This is the crop tool. It al it's also the tool where you can flip the orientation of your photo. On the, on the left-hand side, there is a square with an arrow over the top of it. So you click that, whoop, your photo flips. Click it again, flips again, a third time, and finally a fourth time. You can also change the ratio of the photo. Don't worry about that right now. Leave it, leave it wherever it is. You can see in this, all four corners of your photo suddenly look like they've got little like, remember your grandma's photo album had those little black things on where the photos fit in? Grab one of those and just start moving around, and you can see what's going to happen. 
the photo gets darker except inside that square. And what that square is, is that's your crop square. So that's how you focus your photo, compose your photo on just the parts that you think are the most interesting. Usually stuff that's in the center third, not dead center, but the center third. So for example, in the upper right hand corner of this photo, there's part of the house. Well, I don't want that in my photo. It doesn't add anything to the photo. There's nothing interesting there. So what I'll do is I'll grab that and scroll and, and bring that bar down. So now that's gone and it moves out of the photo. Maybe I want to, actually for the rest of this photo, I like the rest of the photo. You could go up there, just show the the barn. This is the barn uh, behind our house. There's a, uh, several horses or three horses back there. So I'm going to go back down and I want to and get these guys zeroed in all the way down. So there's my crop. Now I'm not going to hit done here. I'm going to hit the funny little circles, the monochrome circles. Up pops a whole bunch of presets. Now these are things that Apple thinks you might be interested in seeing and using in your photos. And again, click on them. See what they do. Mono. Tonal. Noir. I don't know what any of those things mean. You don't need to know what, the, what those things mean. Do you like the effect? Do you like the photo? Fade. Chrome. Process. And transfer. In this case, I like I kind of like chrome because it brightens things up. But I also like transfer too. So I'm going to stick with transfer. But again, I'm not going to hit done. I'm going to hit the weird little circle clocky type thing. And a bunch more options pop up. And you can see it says light, color, black and white. So I'll click on light. And I've got another scrolly thing. I can go back and forth and choose the level of light I want. But, the, but, but, but wait, there's more. On the left, on the right hand, on the left hand side, you see the word light. But on the right hand side, you see three lines or four lines. Is it four lines? Three. I can't, three? three. That's how bad my eyes are. I can't see whether it's three or four. Click on the three lines. Now you get a bunch yeah. more options inside of light. And again, you don't need to know what any of these things do. You don't need to know the technical meaning of exposure, highlight, shadow, brightness, contrast, black. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Click on them see what happens. So I click exposure and there's that line at the bottom. I just start moving it back and forth till I get the exposure that I like. So I get the, the photo the way I want it to be. So I'll dial down the exposure a little bit. Now I don't have to click on the three little lines again. I can just swipe up at exposure and the next option pops up. Highlight. So I'll play around with the highlights until I get them where I want them. Scroll up again shadows. And it's kind of self-explanatory. You kind of understand that shadows are the, the dark parts of your photo. Brightness. Make your photo darker, make your photo brighter. I like it right there. Contrast. Same thing. And finally, black point. I don't know what black point does, but I think it's kind of cool. Now I want to go to color. This is manipulating the light of the entire photo. Now I click on the three lines again and there underneath light is color. Same thing as before. You have the slider you can slide back and forth to add more color, take color out. You have the three lines you can click on and then you have saturation. I click on saturation. I scroll back and forth. Mm. Oh, that's a little too much. I dial it back to where I think I want it. You can go all the way down to black and white. You can take all the color out of it completely. So what I want to do is, and you can have it be kind of like a little pinky. Those flowers are actually, what, those are kind of violety reddish flowers? Yeah, pink. Pink. But I've made them really light pink in, in yeah. this. But I, I want it to be more realistic. They're more so like that. There. I'll put it there. Yeah. Scroll up. Again, playing with the contrast. Right there. Mm. And now the color cast of it. I don't know what color cast is. Mm. But... That looks like the photo that I want it to be. And finally, the last three dots, more. And this is where you can add the other cool. thing. If you want to 
For example, this app called Skew. Skew is a really cool app for if you're taking pictures of buildings, the iPhone will distort the lines of a building as it goes up. And Skew straightens that out for you automatically. So I wanted to do all these edits for color and exposure there, but then take the photo in another app, that's how you do it. If I wanted to use Camera Plus or Lightly or any other app, this is what I would, I would do it. Finally, you click Done. It does a little thing, boom, you're done. Mm -hmm. Now the photo looks a little more what I wanted it to look like when I took it. From here, you can favorite it, a little heart symbol. And on the far left, you can do the usual stuff of send it the message, pocket, mail, iCloud, Twitter, Facebook, Flickr, print, slideshow, assign the contact, the usual, all those little Facebook things. It's really easy to do this kind of stuff really quickly with the basic editing software of the iPhone. Take a picture, look at it. If you like the picture, then remember from last week, if you don't like it, delete it. If you like the picture, hit the edit button. And then start playing with it. And after a while, most of my edits take me about maybe 20, 25, 30 seconds before I start posting them to Twitter or Facebook or email to a friend. I can take a photo and because of experience, because I've taken a lot of photos, I've done a lot of editing. From experience, I can go, aha, okay, that photo needs this. It needs this. I have to do this to the photo. So I go boom, boom, boom. It's done. And it's posted away on a website just that fast. So if you're not using the editing features of your iPhone, I really, really encourage you to start doing it. So start playing around with let me turn over there. Start playing around with that stuff because it'll quite frankly, it will make your photos better. That's the job of editing, is to make the photo that you already have be a better photo. Um, with it, without that, you're Photos will continue to be just average photos. And you don't want an average photos. You don't want to just take average everyday photos. Hopefully, you want your photos to be good and memorable. And this is certainly one way to accomplish that. Is this screen still on, Kim? Yes. It is. The screen is. Well, Monty was suggesting that when you do that, that you don't have you on there while you're talking. I like you me. Just have the, <laughs> the explanation. Are you on the screen, Kim? Yes. So for some reason, this computer doesn't recognize you anymore. Tweet, tweet, tweet. I don't know why I did that, but it did it. Let's do some. Uh, you're welcome, Mo. Not a problem. Oh, and uh, next week, Mo, uh, Mo wanted me to take a look at a piece of software called Emulsion. I posted up on I posted up on the loop about it. It's an interesting piece of software. Um, kind of. In between um, Apple's free Photos app and l Adobe's $100 Lightroom app, $50, it doesn't have nearly the features of Lightroom, but it's got a lot more features than Photos. So I'm going to play around with that um, this week, and we will see if I can't uh, make it sing and dance and let you guys know whether or not it's a worthy alternative to the full-blown version of Lightroom. Now what do you see on the screen? Me. Are you moving? Mm, yep. What the hell? Yep. yep. I'm, trying, I'm trying to share the screen. And uh, it's just not, not, not good. Hang on a second. I, so I can't get you on QuickTime using your own thing. Just take me off. No, the audience wants to the audience doesn't want to look at me. Look, there you oh, go. Oh <laughs> that's not a good view. What do you mean it's not a good view? That's like way too close. It's not too close. Mm hmm It's not. It is. See? See these lines? Yeah. What do you got to stress about? <laughs> Living with you. Oh, come <laughs> on now. <laughs> no. That was completely uncalled for. Yes, it was. Okay, take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Okay, we're gonna we're we're, we're gonna do a vote. We're gonna do a vote with the audience. Close. How many folks want to see just me? 
How many folks want to see me and Kim? No, there's no option for just Kim, you bastards. Okay? <laughs> Don't be dicks. They know. They not the close version. This is too much. Arc sign. How much data is lost from picture when shared via various methods, such as iMessage versus iCloud photo sharing? Arc sign, I have no clue. Because that stuff doesn't matter to me. Uh, I don't I don't share full size photos. I don't have photos. Um, if I'm sending someone a photo, I've got a copy of it, a full size raw image of it already backed up somewhere. So I don't worry about that. I know what you're asking about. Um, basically, assume all services will compress your original image in any number of ways. What are you doing? <laughs> what were you doing? I you know we're doing a show here, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just tweeting something. No, you weren't. You watched watching a video no, of a motorcycle. Oh, I was tweeting a video of my motorcycle. Um, the mosquito says both of you on screen is cool unless you're making a very specific point that isn't part of the conversation that's why I'm not sure yes <laughs> oh yeah that's a good look that's kind of cheating <laughs> making yourself look unattractive is cheating I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for that stupid for some reason hmm. this thing doesn't this seem this is like one of those um, what do they call them those um, makeup mirrors that bar places use you know let's just get in there and see what pores need to be what blackheads or zits you have Woo-hoo. okay all right hang on a second yeah. just <laughs> <laughs> make it stop yeah okay hang on hang on hang on hang on hang on so let me uh try to reconnect you to that one how do i connect i don't connect to the to the window stop it Stop it! Why is this thing moving around like this? Stop it! Jesus! You can see it jumping around on me. Okay, good. So that's that. And then I want to get you out of there. Kim's MacBook Air. Connection failed to Kim's MacBook Air. Good. No, because now it can't get, can't get you off screen. It's going to get me off. <laughs> Stop it! It's a family show. We won't be having any of your smut, <laughs> young lady. I'll tell you that right now. Monty will be cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> any second now. <laughs> yeah, just do what I do with everything. Just, just keep just pressing the button. Keep pressing the button until something else happens. Oh, for God's sake. I can't, I can't quit out of you. On screen share. Mm. Mm. Well, I'm just going to quit screen share. There just you go. F it. Just. There you go. Oh, you're stuck with me. God damn it. Uh, let's do some emails. We'll get emails for you guys. As always, send us emails to onair at yourmaclifeshow.com. I love getting emails from you guys during the week or during the show, wherever you so choose to send them to me. Just checking to make sure I don't have any emails from today for anybody. Maybe. Nope. Okay. Oh, um. Remember, I, I talked before about that um, camera clip, that, that uh, ca- Capture Pro thing, and the issue I had with it was that <coughs> um, it was a great clip. I love the clip, but your hand was naked on the outside of it. Well, I can't afford to have that happen with this camera. I can't drop this thing, not only because I'll be on a boat and it's liable to get wet, but it's also a $4,000 lens that I can't afford to replace. So... I actually put my money where my mouth is, and while the capture, the Peak Design guys sent me the uh, Capture Pro clip, I bought the clutch grip for them. So I'm actually going to have three different ways to mount this sucker. It's going to be mounted on my belt loop. I'm going to have another uh, Luma loop attached to it. There will be a chest loop, and I'm going to have the camera clutch loop. This thing will not fall off. Let me tell you that right now. Um. Where's my email list? On show email. No messages. What the hell? Oh, my God. Our good friend Scott Randall said, Sean, after you talked about your body mass index last week, I decided to check mine. It is 25.8. Scott says he's five foot six, weighs 160. I don't have a beautiful sculpted body, but my stomach is completely flat, and I don't have that much body weight. But the chart says 
I'm overweight. Mm, yeah. They recommend I lose between 66 and 45 pounds. So six I can see, but I would not call myself overweight. My son says the way they calculate BMI is outdated, and that's absolutely true. There's no doubt, Scott and everyone, the BMI calculations are outdated. Ignore them. Ignore the fact that it says you're obese. You're not. But use them as a, a measure. Ignore the word BMI. And just call it me. So if you're at 25.8, your goal should be get that number down. Because even if BMI is completely accurate, inaccurate, it still does measure something. So if you get that 25.8 down to, I don't know, 23, 20, it means you're losing that weight or that body mass. <coughs> As for dieting, I do not track calories. I do not try to eat. I do try to not eat over 100 grams of carbs a day. Because I don't even know what that means. I, 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 w- I would have no clue how much 100 grams of carbs is. For the most part, I don't even know what a freaking carb is. don't care either. I found my body does not do well with carbs. I love Jim's piece and how the watch improved his health when I read it because it's very well written. For me, however, it reinforced my decision to not get one. It did, however, provide me with knowledge that helped me make that decision. I've always worked out three days a week. I was quite heavy as a child in my early teens. Once I got into lifting weights, my appearance improved and I looked normal. Jim did not diet. He just got more active and ate less of the foods that tend to make people overweight. Most people, however, will have to do more than that. He related that as a teen, he was actually quite skinny. So genetically, that is how he's supposed to be. I imagine that before this, his diet and lack of exercise allowed him to put on weight as he got older, which is true for all of us. I found I needed to cut way down the, on the foods that caused me to gain weight. So, I avoid bread, pasta. By the way, it's pronounced pasta, not pasta. Unless yours is a Canadian pronunciation. Pasta. Hey, are we going to do this again? It's pasta. Or it's pasta. It's, it's either way. Past, pasta. It's either way. It doesn't matter. Pasta. It doesn't matter. You just said it mattered. You just told no, someone for, not for to say pasta. Or twi, or whatever the hell you called it. I didn't say tortoise. I'm, we're tortoise. talking pasta now. Not pasta. I do eat them occasionally. I have a splurge meal, but not on a regular basis. He also has cut out potatoes and rice. So I don't need the watch for health tracking, which I've always done. And for other th- the other things, I have no problem reaching for my iPhone. Okay, lastly, since this is your Mac life, some Mac stuff. The introduction of the new, less expensive Retina iMac had a lot of people reviewing it. I have one thing to say. $2,000 is overpriced for a Mac, or any computer, with an old-fashioned platter hard drive. It will provide a bottleneck in an otherwise pretty fast computer. If you spend the $200 in the SSD, that brings you within $100 of the, $100 of the better model. At that point, why not just buy the better model, which comes with an SSD or Fusion Drive? I'm not saying I'm smarter than Apple's marketing team, but anyone can make a mistake, which I think they did with this one. I don't really see it fitting in the lineup. Well, the thing is, Apple knows that too. Apple wants you to buy the more expensive machine. They're doing that on purpose. Our friend Don Beck there in Chilmark, Massachusetts, just finished last week's show and brought up a question. You mentioned in your workflow segment that the first thing you do is a quick, brutal run-through of your pictures to eliminate the ones that are obviously not to your liking. Because I also take a lot of shots, although not as many as you, I try to trash the bad ones right away, too. My problem, I frequently take four or five shots and like them all. Give them the time, I can narrow them down to the best one, but on a quick run-through, I can't seem to figure out which ones to keep, so I keep too many. Examples are, are sunset, where I only need one of the beautifully lit clouds, but which one? Or a group picture, such as at my son's recent high school graduation, where I want to get the maximum number of smiles without having any embarrassing scowls. Do you have any ideas how to speed this part of the process up? The only way to speed the process up, Don, is to just accept it. That if you've got four good shots, throw away three of them. Doesn't matter. Close your eyes and hit delete. But I, I'm not saying do that. What I'm saying is, while it won't speed things up, it might make things easier. Keep those shots. In your first edit, because remember, your first edit is to get rid of the bad shots. Not to call them down to only the absolute best ones, but just to get rid of the bad ones. So you're not wasting time, 
hard drive space, mental energy, trying to fix bad photos. So, for example, if you've got four good sunset shots, keep all four of them. But on your second edit, maybe three days later, you go back and look at them, and depending on what software you're using, John, don't say what software you're using, try to look at them side by side by side and see if there's any subtle differences of your photo that make it a better or worse shot. But also take a look at it and see if it's the exact same shot. For example, if you're on burst mode, I shoot a lot on burst mode. If it's the exact same shot that you caught on burst mode, there's no difference, then throw one away. No matter which one, if they're, if they're functionally duplicates, throw one away. And finally, he says, P.S., I enjoy Kim, your new co-host. And even more importantly, I hear how much you enjoy her. Aw. Cute. I don't think you know nearly Get how me much a bucket. I don't, know how you, I don't know if you know nearly how much I enjoy her, dude. Mm-hmm. I enjoy her a lot more than you think. Okay, stop. I hate that. <laughs> Yeah, more than friggin' cinnamon, Monty. (laughs) 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 Sorry. Oh, dear, dear, dear. David Bridal. Where's David at? David is in uh, uh, David Bridal Photography. Oh, cool. I love that the iPhone, Apple Watch, and wearables have created the ability to track your health and measure oneself. However, there are some real downsides. I'm pleased you said if you don't hit your target for that day, you don't need to beat yourself up about it. That's absolutely true. That's one thing you cannot do, folks. Unless you are a serious athlete, unless you are an absolutely hardcore workout fiend, do not beat yourself up on a day-to-day basis. What? What? Is it, is it, that came from your computer. No. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, unless you're an absolute dead-on hardcore athlete, day to day, don't bother. Don't even don't even weigh yourself day to day. Make it once a week. Kim is notorious for this. She weighs herself day to day, and then you beat yourself up about it mm-hmm. that you've gone up half a pound or or two pounds. And yep. Oh, 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 don't do that. Do not, if, if you have to, don't weigh yourself at all. Mm. Do it monthly. Maybe do it weekly. If you find yourself beating yourself up about it and feeling discouraged, that's really something you can't do. You, all you can do is do what Jim said. Eh, screw it up today. I'll try to do better tomorrow. That's all we can do. Weight is relative. Muscle weighs more than fat, and this is why people plateau at a certain weight. Body fat percent is a better message. Sorry, measurement. The BMI index is an average of the population from 20 to 30 years ago. Linford Christie, ex-British 100-meter Sprinter, yep. according to the BMI, was morbidly obese. Nutrition is 80% of people's fight, not exercise. I don't know. Now, would you agree with that? Nutrition is 80% of the fight. Yes, you got to be healthy. you got to feed your body with the right stuff. But by that logic, it means you can eat better but not exercise. You can eat better, but not exercise, or yeah. you 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 don't have to exercise. I think I you need to do to both say. in order to be healthy. Of course you do. You can eat all the perfect foods in the world, but still have shitty cardio. Everything in moderation, yeah. You, you can cut out potatoes and rice and carbs and, and all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, and yet you still can't walk up a flight of stairs because you've got bad cardio. Yeah. You need to do both. Mm-hmm. And again, in moderation. Mm. And as Kim and I have found out, as Jim found out, the easy thing to do is just go for a walk. When we say exercise, we don't mean no. run for 10 miles and lift 100 pounds with each arm. It's three times a week, go for a walk. Three times a week, half an hour. That's all you need. Round your block. Walk slow if you have to. He says, the first two points I think are easily understood. However, the nutrition part is a little more difficult due to misinformation. The food pyramid, this theory, or that graphic have been rehashed several times depending on your ethnicity, exercise level, and or fitness. Sorry, profession. There's a movement towards three aspects of health, and these being in balance. Every person needs nutrition, exercise, and mental balance. I feel exercise gets a lot of promotion, but when it comes to nutrition... People are only interested in dieting rather than lifestyle change. 
As for mental health, well, you touched on that subject before, Sean, and I fully agree. We need an increased emphasis on mental health and fortitude. I personally finished university and stopped all sports. So did I. I was, just, I was bad for that. My health deteriorated, including the development of ulcer, 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 ulcerative colitis, driven by stress. I went from 13 stone, mm-hmm. 189 pounds, to 18 stone, Ooh. 250 pounds. Si- sorry, 260 pounds. Mm. After several years of wallowing in self-pity, I looked in the mirror and something clicked. I had studied the human body for several years in university. I was taught how to train elite athletes, and I looked a mess. It took that mental trigger to force me to deal with my self-doubt and move forward. That, I think, is the key for a lot of people. It's like people always talk about addicts. Addicts needing to hit rock bottom before they can pull themselves out of their addiction. It's not that bad for those of us who are a little overweight or a lot overweight or generally unhealthy. But it certainly takes something to push you through that wall that stopped you from eating a little bit better, eating a little bit less. One of the worst things we have here in North America is portion size. You go to Europe. I remember <laughs> traveling through Europe with, with, with the Griffin Technology guys, and every one of us, you know, we go to a restaurant and we'd order a steak dinner, and they come up with a little four-ounce steak and seven fries, mm-hmm. and we're like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, where's the, where's the rest of my supper? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, you know, here in America, we're used to a 12 ounce steak, a roast potato, a bunch of fries. Keep your damn salad. But if one of the things I'm, tr- I'm trying to do with Kim is have half my plate be salad. And she makes a really good Greek salad. I, lo- I hate lettuce in my salad, but I love Greek salad tomatoes and feta and cucumber and green onions and, and on- onion, green onions. Uh, green green peppers and onions. Love that. So I'm trying to get half my plate full of salad and then the other half be a meat. And we've done pretty good. We haven't had rice in, in a month. And we only occasionally have potatoes nowadays. So portion control is a big thing. And then just getting out and doing something. Just watching what you eat. Just don't. You can still eat whatever you want. My Biscoff cookies. Oh, God, I love my Biscoff cookies. I love, love, love my Biscoff cookies. But instead of having ten every morning now with my coffee, I'm having five. I'm still having the cookies. I'm just not having as many of them. So that's where the My Fitness Pal app helped me a lot, was to understand, you know, ten of those Biscoff cookies, that's a lot of calories, dude. Five, it's not so bad. Having three breakfast bars, eh, don't do that. Have one. Instead of having two sandwiches, have one sandwich and a salad. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It takes a lot of thinking initially. But once you get in the groove, it becomes real easy. It becomes real easy to, when you walk up to the, to, to the dinner area, to scoop your food onto your plate. The first thing I do is I put salad on there. And I put half the plate of salad. Then I don't have any room for too much other stuff. Keep that stuff in mind. Love to hear more about what you guys are doing uh, to help yourselves get healthier. Uh, the simple things that you're doing, whether it's uh, you start exercising, you're eating better, or any apps you're using, or any concepts or ideas you're using, send, it, send us uh, uh, the information, uh, e- emails to onair at yourmaclifeshow.com, or send them to me directly at sean at yourmaclifeshow.com. That's it for tonight's show. I want to say thanks very much for you guys for joining me. Thanks very much to my lovely and talented co-host, Kim. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Even though you weren't on camera. Don't like being on camera. No, I don't like being on camera. I hate cameras. Why? Because it shows how old I am. All my lines. (laughs) (laughs) All right, folks. Until next week, and and wish us luck. We're going whale watching. Oh, my God. It's going to be so much fun. woo That's going to be so much fun. Ride the motorcycle. My motorcycle. Because... Fair rider weather girl over there won't take her noisy bike. No, I'm not taking it. I'm not. It's a, just a quick weekend. I don't need my bike. I'll just ride on the back with you. It's going to be in the back of mind. We'll be going up to uh, Campbell River, British Columbia. Really looking forward to it. And hopefully you guys uh, uh, will stay tuned to next week's show or follow me on Twitter. I'll post pictures there or Facebook, whatever, whatever that stuff is. Uh, so until next week, as always, I've been Sean King. 
And I am the amazing camping guy. And you've been listening to your Mac Life. See ya!